But see, they don't know that I repented, do they? Just God knows that I repented. And God knows my heart and He knows your heart. And that's what He's looking at. He's looking down in our heart. And He knows what's in there. That's the reason I try to keep my heart clean. I try to uh, not have no uh, ill feelings towards nobody. And you know, a, a young lady said she wouldn't be back to this church because I said that you had to forgive the people that had done you wrong. And, and I wish I'd have had time to sit down and explain it, you know, but I didn't, and I haven't got to yet. I, I intend to, if I can get somebody to go with me and she wants to, I'd love to sit down and explain that we do have to forgive. I guess she thought I meant that just instantly she had to forgive those that had sexually assaulted her. I know it's not always an instant thing, and it takes time, and it... But we do have to forgive people, don't we? We do have to forgive people. And, and, but I wish, you know, a lot of times you'll say things and people take it one way and you don't really have time to explain it. But, but God has compassion upon us and, and He wants us to have compassion upon other people. You know, there's a lot of people that will do a lot of wicked things and they may say a lot of wicked things and, and, uh, they may hurt you, but if you've got yourself out of the way, if you're dying out to yourself and, and you're concentrating on being more like Him, then you won't take it so personally when somebody says something. See, I've got to walk this walk myself. You've got to walk this walk yourself. And, and we can't depend on somebody else to do it for us, and we can't let somebody else knock us off the road either. We've got to keep walking and we've got to be strong in God and keep doing what we know God wants us to do because God is looking at my heart. Amen. He's judging me according to what's in my heart. Right. And, uh, but Jesus, he, he healed the sick, all manner of sickness and disease, so I know that's God's will because He did it then and He, he does not change. And, and He did it out of compassion. And if you and I love people enough, we'll tell them the truth and we'll love them enough to pray for them and, and have compassion upon them. Mm -hmm. I took a, a man a load of rock there last week and he began to tell me he'd lost use of his arm, uh, his right arm, and he was having to try to write the check out with his left hand. And, and I just wanted to pray for him. You know... And I do everybody. I don't care who it is. You could come up to me this morning and say, my leg's hurting me. Well, instantly, I want to pray for you. You know, and, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, am I just supposed to go around praying for everybody that says they got any little thing wrong with them? Am I just, you know, I don't hardly know what to do. I'll be honest with you because, you know, this man, I didn't know him from anybody. But just as soon as he told me he had something wrong, then I want to pray for him. and, and Because I, I know what God can do. Yeah. And I love to see God touch people, don't you? Yes. I, I love to see God touch people. And I love to see them be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Just yes. like that testimony Janet read. Yes. You know, stuff like that blesses me, Janet. I don't know them people from Adam. You know, I've never seen them, don't know them. But to hear that God has touched somebody and healed somebody and raised them up and give them a few more good years, you know, that just blesses me. And, and I think that is just nothing but what God has put down on the inside of us. And, and I think we need to concentrate on what's going on with other people, you know, and, and how can we help them. Now, not everybody wants you to pray for them. And not everybody's going to believe when you pray for them. And, and you know, I have trouble discerning who, who am I supposed to pray for because I want to pray for everybody. You know, and uh, maybe I should. I don't know. Maybe every time somebody says I've got a problem, maybe I should just stop there and say, do you care if I pray for you? You know, and, uh, but, but, <laughs> but I just... You know, I, I can hear about somebody being in the hospital in Lexington. I won't go pray for them. You know, and, and used to, I'd go about all the time. Uh, but anymore, I'm trying to be led because, 
you know, if you go and nothing happens, then it probably wasn't the Lord telling you to go. But if you go, and of course a lot of times things will happen you don't see, and it may touch people in a way that you don't see, so you ought to go when you feel like it's the Lord. But, uh, but in Matthew 14 and 14, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, The desert, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give you them to eat. And they said unto him, We have but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men not beside the women and children. So Jesus had compassion, first of all, and He healed those that was there that needed healing. He healed the sick first, didn't He? Then He said, well, they've been with me, and this is a place where they have no food. And I'm not going to send them away hungry. And they said, well, we've got five loaves and two fishes. Must have been some pretty big fish and some pretty big loaves, wasn't it? Or either that or there was a great miracle took place there. So he takes the five loaves and two fishes and feeds 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. So he took five loaves and two fishes and probably fed 15,000 people there. And then after he gets through, they take up 12 baskets full. They take up more after he gets through than they started out with. Now if you and I have compassion on people, and you may not agree with me on this one part here, I believe if a person has food and clothing and shelter, I believe they got all they need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. I don't think they have to have color TV. I don't think they have to have an iPad, an iPhone. I don't think they have to have all those things. I think if they've got food and clothing and shelter and they've got Jesus, I think that's all we have to have. Of course, we have to have that every day, don't we? So sometimes you have to get up and you have to go out to work and work. But I, I'll be honest with you, I don't have much pity on people that won't work. And I just, I just don't. I don't have much compassion. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I need to pray, Lord, give me more compassion for those that won't work. <laughs> but I just honestly believe that if, if you're providing food and clothes and shelter to people, I think it's all you because, see, there's thousands upon thousands that don't have that. Exactly. And I think until we supply that for the ones that don't have that, we certainly don't have to go beyond that for the others. And But I, I believe we need compassion upon people. And if I see somebody out here and they don't have food, yeah. and I have food, then I think it's up to me Absolutely. to give them food. If I see somebody out here and, and I can help them in any way to get those things, I think that's what God's called me to do. And if I'll take what He's given me and I'll give it out to help them, I believe I'll end up with more than I started out with. I believe He said, Give and it shall be given you. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall God cause men to give to you. But it's after we obey God and we give. We was talking the other night about how the church, how Jesus started the church. 
In the beginning, in Acts, when Jesus started the church, they sold everything they had, the Christians did, they brought it to the apostles, and the apostles distributed it out to everybody, and everybody was equal. Now that's how the church started. You can read it in the book of Acts. Well, what we was talking about is these uh, cults, uh, such as, well, I won't name them, but, but we was talking about these cults that uh, they, they put all their money into that organization. And they have a man that they think is God. And they, sometimes they call him a prophet, but they think he's way up here above everybody. And they run all their money and all their business through that, but he doesn't distribute it out equal. See, that's where, that's where there's the difference between the early church and the cults that we have today. Yes, they'll gladly take all your money, but they will not distribute it out equal like the early church did. And, but I, I honestly believe that, that the church needs to be more equal. I honestly believe that. I believe that I don't need to have uh, ten times more than I need and some of my brother or sister going without food and clothes. I don't believe that. And, and I believe that God will speak to my heart. I believe if I listen to God, He'll speak to me. And, and if you're doing without those things that you have need of, and I have them, I believe God will let me know that you need those things. Then it's up to me, am I going to share what God's given me to share? But I, I, think that we, uh, I think that we honestly need to pray, Lord, give me compassion and let me know those that are in need. It's just like I said in Sunday school, folks, and you don't have to agree with me on this, okay? Uh, if I'm digging a hole, for myself. And you're trying to help me out of that hole. And you're saying, listen, you're, you're digging, you're going the wrong direction. You're digging a hole for yourself. And and you're, you want to help me, but I won't listen to you. And I won't listen to God. And I just keep digging a hole for myself. Then you or God, neither one can help me because I won't listen. So you can only help, and that's the reason I think you need to be able to discern who God wants you to help, is because you can only help the ones that will listen to you or to God. You know, if you're telling them what the Bible says, they should listen to you. But they certainly should listen to God when He speaks to them. And, and people that, I, I, don't, I don't try to help people that waste their money on drugs. I just don't do it. Because they're not wanting my help. See, and no matter if I had... I, I, told, I told our friend there last night because uh, back years ago uh, when me and him run around together, we spent all of our money on drugs, just about. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm glad my parents wasn't rich. I'm glad they wasn't the kind of parents that just doled money out to me. Because I said, had they done that, I would have probably destroyed myself on cocaine or something. But I said, my parents made me work for everything I got. And I went out and I made, at that time, I made like $125 a week. Well, you're not going to buy much drugs with $125 a week. And I told him, I said, I'm glad they was like that. I'm glad nobody just kept handing me money because I would have probably destroyed myself. But but I, I, don't, I don't do that, folks. I don't think that... That that's when there's people over here that needs food, and they I don't care what country they're in, uh, but there's plenty of people and elderly people in this country that needs help, and our government are they're not helping, them. and there's plenty of people that I can look at and I can say now this person needs help and and I need to have compassion, and if I've got any extra I need to put it there. I don't need to give it to somebody that's going to go out here and snort it up their nose, do it? Because you cannot help a person like that. They, you know, now if they was hungry, I would feed them, but I wouldn't give them money. 
I just say here, here I'll, I'll feed you if you're hungry. If you need a shirt, I've got shirts you can have. You need a coat, I've got a coat you can have. And, and I would even give them a place to stay if they didn't have a place to stay. But I'm not going to give them money to snort up their nose because I don't... I, God would condemn me. I'll just be honest with you. You know, I used to have an alcoholic brother. And, uh, you know, I, I called the law a few times and had them just to lock him up because I said, he won't kill nobody. He won't kill himself. He won't have an accident. He, he'd been through all kinds of wrecks and accidents and stuff and God had spared his life. And, and I thought, well... He won't listen to me. I would first try to reason with him and he wouldn't listen. So I'd just call the law. And they'd come to my house and they'd arrest him. They'd take him and put him in jail a few days and he'd sober up. You know. But but God and, and them are tough decisions. See, the world's in the shape it's in today because a lot of people don't want to make any tough decisions. They they just want to keep letting things go. But somebody's got to make a decision, don't they? All right, let's look at one more verse here. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 17. Well, you don't even have to turn there. I've done quoted that. He said, But whosoever hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So if I see that my brother, now, now look who it's talking about here. He said, if I see my brother have need and I shut up my bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in me? So, you know, I've got to look and see who has a need. And then I need to have compassion upon them and try to help them if I can. And like I said earlier, I want to make sure I'm doing it for the right reasons. I don't go and preach to try to build a name. I don't go to WLJC to try to build a name. Uh, I don't come here to try to build a name. I'm not trying to build anything myself. I want Jesus to be recognized, don't you? I want Him to be glorified. I want people to see what a good God we serve. And how good it is to know God. I don't know about you this morning, but I feel very blessed. I feel very blessed. You say, is everything all right? Your house and, and your body's just everything's all right with it? No. But I feel very blessed. I feel very blessed because I know Him. I know Him this morning. And He lives in me. And I can call upon Him anytime. Anytime. I can go to Him and I say, Lord, i I got a problem here. And you've got the answer. And He is a good God. Isn't he? he loves us, folks. He's had compassion upon us. He's had mercy upon us. He wants me to be well and healthy. He wants me to enjoy life. He wants me to be blessed. He wants me to be blessed. But He wants me to bless others, don't He? Yes. He, You know, it wouldn't bother God one bit if I had a million dollars this morning. It wouldn't bother He, He'd love that if I'd do the right thing with it. That's right. He'd love that. Just think how many people, you know, you hear people say this all the time. Boy, if I won the lottery, I'd, I'd give this and I'd give that. And I'd, that's easy to say when you ain't won the lottery, ain't it? <laughs> But let somebody lay a million in your hands and, and see how greedy you get. But, but it, God would love for me to be blessed. God, God wants us to prosper and He wants us to be in good health. You know, I think of that scripture a lot of times uh, in the Old Testament where He, he said, uh, you know, I would that you prosper and do good. And, and he, he wants us to do good so that we can help other people. God loves us this morning. Would you stand? I appreciate you coming. And, uh, you know, I, I love to preach. Probably as good as Herschel loves to teach. And, uh, and I love people that 
love God. Amen. It don't matter where they're at, what color they are, or nothing else to me. I love people that love God. I love being around people that love God. You can have fellowship with somebody that loves God, can't you? Yeah. You can have a good time. You can have a good time with people that love God. And I appreciate you coming this morning. If you have a need, as she comes and sings, would you just bring it to the Lord? Or if you need to be uh, anointed and prayed for, well, we'll do that. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must try. I'll have no fear where Jesus Jesus walks beside me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storm clouds rise, the dark clouds rise, they don't work. somebody in there 
he said, asked him where I was at, and I got up and went in there. And my, a sister of mine, she'd sent a tenderloin about this long and a pack of bacon. <laughs> to me and I, and I, I think, and I got that verse right there on the, by the counter. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, wasn't something I needed. I mean, I, it was a desire, yeah. but it was something I, yeah. I, I said it. But I, I mean, you know, I thought it in my yeah. mind, and, and it wasn't but just a few minutes. Yeah. So that was that was uh, in my kitchen. Yeah. That's how good that God yeah. is. Amen. And that's you know, and, and I and and I want to thank God for her. And I told her, she had no idea. Uh, you know, she had no idea of anything we needed. She she told me she's going to send up a bottle of magnesium pills. Yeah. And and, and uh, when they come here, you know, I thought. There was that verse right there beside of it. Yeah. Delight yourself in the Lord, That's and right. He will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Right. And he, show, he is so good to us. He, yes. is, he has been so merciful. And you know, I thank God. I told her, I said, well, I said, I, I know that you know the voice of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I said, and I told her I, what I thought. And I, and I told you, and I said, well, I wish you I had had you get some back. Yeah. <laughs> That's a story. And the Lord delivered it right to my door. That's, That's right. the kind of God that we serve. That's right. And you know, we don't need to put no limits on Him. I mean, That's it's right. not just the little things we can trust Him for everything That's that right. we need. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of you help us here. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus today, I praise you, Father God, I'm asking you to clean this blustering from the top of her head, God, so it's hurt me. You foul demon spirit that raised you, I give you to you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out of her body, and you curse of the enemy, I rebuke you, and I cast you down in Jesus' name this day. I speak health, I speak healing, I speak wholeness in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Satan, you have no authority here. In Jesus' name, we claim it done this day. Heal the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else in that prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else got a testimony? Thank you, Jesus. I don't have no testimony. No. I don't know if anybody remember Dave Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else got a prayer request? I have three on my heart who have cancer. I gave them in last week. You know, I'd still, still like you to move them. One of them I know is not safe unless yeah. something's happened recently. She's in the fourth stage. They said it went from her <coughs> lungs to her brain. So okay. while she's in her right mind, yeah. I just pray that yeah. she'll yeah. turn back to the Lord. Yeah, I just remember that. He may ask our request this morning. Brother Allen, uh, Kelly and Brendan are traveling today. So the Lord watch over them. Amen. Are you to be here this year? Yes. Amen. 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 I'm thankful that uh, the Lord brought his home to New Orleans safe and safe healthy. Yeah. Safe travels. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm thank the Lord for, for his back. He's never bad in his back. Okay. I'm going to thank the Lord for keeping my daughter and all her family safe last night. They went trail riding over through these ranch, and they called about 9 o'clock. He got lost somewhere up on the mountain and had a little two-year-old great-granddaughter of mine with him on the horse. Yeah. And uh, I just thank the Lord for shining the moon and the light to yeah. uh, get them back. Amen. Amen. That's big, ain't it? Yeah. It is when it's your family. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. Brother Allen continued to remember my oldest son. Remember all of them. Yeah. I don't know. So my tongue's on my heart. Amen. 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 Somebody else got a request for we pray. Remember church tonight at 6 and uh, uh, Tuesday morning the women, women meet at 10 and uh, Wednesday night Herschel uh, Teaches at 6.30 Wednesday night. So if you can make it. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this service. Thank you that you have been here. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And God, we thank you that we can make these requests known unto you. God, you hear and you know 
every single request that's been mentioned. And Father, you know even what's on our mind this morning, God. And we just pray for strength. And Lord, give us compassion, God. Help us to be an example and have compassion like you had compassion. God, just lead us and guide us in the, in the way that is right. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.